o romeo romeo wherefore art thou romeo deny thy father and refuse thy name or if thou wilt not be but sworn my love and i'll no longer be a capulet tis but thy name that is my enemy thou art thyself though not a montague what's montague it is nor hand nor foot nor arm nor face nor any other part belonging to a man oh be some other name <sighs> what's in a name that which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet so romeo would were he not romeo cold retain that dear perfection which he owes without that title romeo doff thy name and for that name which is no part of thee take all myself Hey everyone, and welcome to Offspring Magazine, the podcast, the podcast where we talk about open science, careers in and out of academia, diversity in science, scientific research, and all kinds of PhD matters. Today on the podcast, we are exploring the age-old question, what is in a name? Science is international, and the Max Planck Society exemplifies this. Working as a scientist, I've often encountered names that I was not sure how to pronounce, and have gone through the embarrassment of saying them wrong. But I've never really thought about how it feels to be on the other side of this interaction, to have your name pronounced wrong, essentially pointing out that you are different. Growing up in Canada, my name was common, and is still common. But now here in Germany, I'm starting to experience how it feels to have people pronounce my name wrong or make comments that it is perhaps odd. Since science is international, I wanted to talk to others about their experiences when they have moved to a lab in a new country, or maybe even they experience this at work in their home country. And from this, to try and learn ways we can create an inclusive work environment. I'm your host, Alison Lewis. My first guest is a fellow PhD student of mine at the MPI for Molecular Cell Biology and Genetics in Dresden. My name is Vasant Tanada and Murray Jason. Uh, I'm a PhD student in the Bruges lab in uh, MPI CBG. And we are looking into chromatin dynamics in the lab. Cool. The reason I wanted to talk to you about this mm -hmm. was I found out recently from one of our friends that many people actually say your name wrong. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, like my first name is Vasantanarain, which is a very long name. Does your name mean anything in particular? So Vasant means spring, the season. Okay. And um, Narayan is the god that preserves. So we have like a train like three gods, like one that creates, one that destroys, and one that preserves. Mm -hmm. And Narayan is a god that preserves. So my name is supposed to be like the one who preserves spring. Mm -hmm. And uh, often it's like shortened to Vasant. Uh, but people often call me Vasant. Okay. Which is an American version of my name. And uh, often the second A is emphasized. So but in my actual name, like none of the A's are emphasized. It's just Vasant. But people just call me Vasant. And I've gotten used to it so much that I'm just sometimes even introduce myself as Vasant to people. <laughs> uh, so I have to know, have I been saying your name wrong like the past three years we've known each other? Yeah, I mean, yes, but I'm completely fine with it. Um, Do you notice now when people say your name wrong or is it, does it? No, I'm actually quite used to it. Um, I mean, sometimes people get my name horribly wrong, then I feel like I should correct them. But if it is some version of Vasant, 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 I'm okay with it. Okay. Yeah, because uh, I often mispronounce people's name. Mm -hmm. And I understand it's uh, it's hard and as long as, uh, they, yeah, as, as long as they pronounce my name somewhat close by, I'm okay with it. And do you ever use your full name? Uh... Only for official emails. Yeah. And documents, yeah. 
yeah you know, even when when it comes to like official emails i uh just write like when i sign i'd write wasn't now in Murugesan, but in the email i'm right hey i'm Vasant, so that like they have an option to call me Vasant and like not type my whole name because uh, i find it painful to type my whole name down sometimes so. okay mm -hmm. so is it more is it like a preference that you go by Vasanth, or if people could say Vasanthanarian, would you go by that? Oh no, I hate when people call me Vasanthanarian. Is uh, that what your parents call you? No, this is Vasant. Oh wow, okay, so it's not no, even like uh, only my mom and dad no, call me. No, I mean unless I'm in trouble or something. Okay. It's it's not a everyday thing. And so yeah. you said you only correct people when it's really really bad. How do you how do you set the border for what really really bad is? I I don't know, but sometimes they just try to like read my whole name like what's up, uh, Narayan, and I'm like, like chill down, just call me Wesson. <laughs> so it's more when people go through the the whole name and they're yeah, like I, stuttering through it. Do you just feel really awkward when? Uh, sometimes yes. I'm like I'm you know like people are like trying to read out my name. Uh, and I'm like, just there. Okay. Fine. Like, um, do you find it different, like in a professional setting or a social setting, the, how people pronounce your name or the name you use? No, no. Actually, it's more or less the same, but, um, I uh, often cheat in a personal setting. Okay. Uh, I just go by like Vinny. Okay. Uh, and the story behind it is that once I was in a party and uh, I introduced myself as Vincent, and this guy was like, oh, cool, Vincent. And uh, <laughs> from Vincent, it became Vinny. And if I'm in a party and if there's like a lot of people, I'm not going to like, you know, go through the thing. I'm like, my name is Vincent. It's Vincent. Like I usually need to like explain my name to people. Yeah. So I completely avoid that. And I'm, I've grown tired of it a little bit. So I just go by like, hey, I'm Vinny. And they're like, oh, Vinny, that's cool. I it just expedites the situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so I don't have to, have to explain my name often. So, yeah. I mean, I, I like the meaning of my name. So if I'm feeling particularly chatty, then I explain the name and the meaning behind it also in parties. Okay. But, but when I'm not chatty, I just like, oh, Vinny. So now when we're at parties, if you're introducing yourself as Vinny, I'm going to know like he's not okay, in the mood yeah. to be here, basically. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Good to uh, know. Or if it's too loud, you know. Yeah, and people just, can't like, hear. Going. I'm like, yeah, Vinny. Yeah. And do you like the name Vinny, or is it like uh, kind of begrudgingly you use it? It depends on who uses it. Okay. Like if um, if if like my boss calls me Vinny, I'd be like, no. No. Yeah, I mean, again, it really depends on the context. Like, if I'm in a party and people call me Vinny, I'm completely fine. But not at work. But I guess, like, I want my close friends to call me Vasant. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, some, like, people, like, people you meet in a party, Vinny is fine. It also, it makes both of our life easier. Yeah. And when when you, like, have these times at work, when you correct people, how do they react? They often want to learn what's the right way to pronounce my name mm -hmm. and they ask like oh where do we emphasize here and there and I tell them and like I don't know they still get it wrong yeah and then I'm like I think the part that annoys me is like I said like oh it's fine but they're really insistent on like no no I want to get this perfectly right so okay. I have to, like sit with them for like 15 minutes and like no no like you're adding like an extra a here yeah or something like that. So that I find a bit cumbersome, but um, I appreciate that they're taking the effort. But sometimes it's just too much. Yeah, I mean, like I'm I'm okay with wasant. Okay. I guess I mean I also have been in Germany long enough, and often when people read my name, they say fasant with the F sound because V in German is fa. And I guess they use a W, and when I say wasn't, they often start writing with a W, like V, yeah. W, A, S. And I'm like, oh, so it's fine. Um, I've had people, I had friends from like different cultures. So I've just gotten used to, used to being called with like different sounds. But yeah, like in, in my workplace, people are, uh, they're very, if, if I correct, 
how they say my name, they're uh, accepting of it. Okay. And uh, does that happen? I, I feel like it doesn't happen very often because you're so chill no, about it. No. Well, once it happened, like I was sending an email and this person, uh, instead of typing Vasant, she just calls me Prashant, which is like a completely different Indian name. Oh. And uh, that I felt a bit iffy about. And like, and did you have to respond to the email? I, I did have to respond to the email. Uh, I was setting up a meeting with someone and I was oh, like, God. Oh, and they call me like, dear Prashant, I'm like, well, it, it's not really hard. You could have just copy pasted my name from my yeah, email. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. when you sent the email back, were you like, first um, line, by the way, my name is Vasanth, or was it more like you just signed off the correct name? I was very tempted to type something passive aggressive. Yeah. Uh, but I thought I would be the bigger person here and just like write my name properly. Okay. I think like I wrote like, hey, it's Vasanth again. Okay. Uh, so it was kind of like a first line thing, but not, hey, you got it wrong. How did you get this wrong? I know. Uh, I mean, like it, it could have been an honest mistake, but at, at that moment it felt like, oh, like, please don't do this. Yeah. Was, uh, yeah, like at that moment I felt like if I was not, if I was from Germany, it would not, like they would not have made like a simple mistake of calling you by someone else. Yeah, exactly. And it, yeah. And yeah, it's also weird because like they didn't like call me like Andy or anything. It was just like an another Indian name. It was an if it had been like yeah. a German name, you would it have been like, like okay, yeah, clearly okay, they're like, confused. Mm -hmm. But it, it was, was another like an Indian name. Indian name. And I was like, ah. Oh. Just kind of that moment of like, we're not all the same. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. So that, that was like the only time where I felt like I really needed to like correct someone. Yeah. But other than that, people have been uh, very chill about it and or they want to know how it's the right way to pronounce my name in the workplace. Talking to Vasanth, I got the impression that having your name repeatedly mispronounced does wear on you. But there can also be really wonderful moments for cultural exchange. I wanted to hear more perspectives, and my next guest is a PhD student from the Max Planck Institute in Bad Nauheim. Yeah, my name is Shengnan Zhao. I'm coming from Bad Nauheim, the Max Planck Institute for Heart and the Lung Research. Yeah, now I'm a PhD like um, second year PhD. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to be here. So so your first name is Shang Nan? Yeah, that's my first name. Okay, and I'm saying that correctly, Shang Nan. Oh my Nan. god, I, I don't even notice that I, whether I should correct you or not. <laughs> uh, yeah, the correct way is Sheng Nan. Sheng Nan? Yeah, see, it's a okay. bit uh, yeah, Sheng Nan. Okay. I wanted to know a little bit about where you grew up and mm -hmm. how your name is perceived there. Is it a common name? Is it not? Yeah, I'm coming from China and grew up in China and I stayed in China for 20 years and here I decided to um, pursue a PhD degree and came here to Germany. And my name in Chinese is not that common because my name, um, so my name sounds more like a boy's name. And okay. Usually, yeah, even Chinese people first time like um, hearing my name, they will know, they will have the impression that I'm very strong <laughs> woman. Yeah, because my name means um, that uh, you can do anything better than boys. Yeah. Oh wow. My mom gave me that name. It's yeah. It has some like Chinese um, background story because in the back, um, Chinese family they prefer to have boys than girls. And okay. Yeah, and maybe if you know like better than uh, like uh, know the Chinese culture, you will know that uh, we struggled a lot about this. So my mom wished that I can like like prove myself that you are better than boys, girls are better than boys, and this is the the reason why she gave me the, this name. And the other hand is this name also um, has a, a meaning means that our generation will be better than last generation. Means young people. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I really like my name actually. And after I came to the Germany, um, of course, I think Chinese, especially Mandarin, has different tones, which for the majority of the foreign people, they cannot um, even notice that very well. So mm -hmm. um, 
in the beginning, I didn't. Um, in the beginning, I, I feel quite uh, awkward for sure because in people like call my name in many many different ways. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So I noticed that uh, for the first time um, by from my 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 German teacher. She's and she, yeah, she's coming from German, and she was in China teach us um, German. And the way she called me um, is quite um, funny in China because it's a um, um, male uh, Canadian, uh, no, com- comedian's name. So okay. that will remind me of uh, like a, a man who is very funny. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, that that was very embarrassing in the very beginning. And but I just gave up to correct her because she 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 needs to remember like fifteen Chinese names. So I think it's maybe a overboard burden for him for her. So I just stopped by correct her, correcting her. And after I came to Germany, I just realized that this happened too often. And if people doesn't like ask me to correct them, I will not correct by myself. <laughs> so if someone says your name wrong and it reminds you of this comedian you just yeah. kind of go with it no no but usually people will not uh, if they um, pronounce my name like that I will correct them for sure because this reminds me of some <laughs> unhappy yeah. experience <laughs> yeah but usually people yeah usually people don't um, pronounce like that um, just the tongue they cannot like um, pronounce pr- properly but which is very difficult for for people outside China I would say do people usually like ask you, am I pronouncing it correctly? Or do they just assume I, I'm doing this right? Yeah, this is a very interesting question because I just realized that um, like I had a very nice experience in the um, like um, for my dentist because he's mm-hmm. very like he's very like, um, like I don't know how to say that, but he uh, makes sure for several times that he pronounced my name correct. So, which make me feel really, really good because this, he's the first person that um, keep ask me to correct him. Maybe because he's quite interested in Chinese culture and he he's also confident about himself that he can pronounce a Chinese name, which mm-hmm. known to be quite quite complicated like very well. So I'm quite impressed, but not everyone like him. I mean, the majority of the people they just pronounce the way they they thought and. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, in very real case, they will ask me to correct them. Yeah. Okay. That's but if someone idea. if someone doesn't ask you to correct them, you usually would you usually correct them? If it's close enough, then I will not. For example, if only the the tongues are not not exactly the same, I wouldn't correct them. I already very appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> do Do you not correct them because? Like, you don't want to make it awkward, or I guess, why do you choose when it's not quite right not to correct them? Yeah, I don't want to make them awkward because I, uh, it, actually, I, I talked about this with my Brazilian roommate. She tried very hard to pronounce my name correctly because she, she, th- she thought that she's my roommate. So she should do, uh, she should pronounce my name as a Chinese people like that. Mm-hmm. But after I, I teach, I told her for maybe a couple of times and I realized that for for people who didn't learn this language from childhood it's very difficult to like um, master this tongue properly so okay. I just don't want them to like to worry about too much about the pronunciation yeah. so in like living in Germany do do you find like not having your name pronounced correctly or maybe sometimes people not knowing how impacts how included you feel in society or how a part of society you feel? Mm, to be honest, a little bit. Especially when I go to, for example, the bank, people work in the bank or the foreigner um, like office and if they pronounce my name incorrectly, it will even more let me feel that I'm not, I'm not belonging to here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That that's the case that make me feel the most like unincluded. Yeah. Do you think um, correcting people more and maybe going through that awkwardness would make you feel better to now hear them if they're going to have to say your name a lot would make you feel better? 
Um, I think it depends if they're they're going to be my colleague. Like um, for example, we are going to stay together for a long time. I would like to correct them for sure. But if we just met one, we just met once, and then like we never met each other forever. So I, I don't think in like I would to correct them for that. Okay. Yeah. Maybe it's painful for you as well yeah. to go through the correcting. Maybe also for them. <laughs> um. I, I guess so. So people here say your name wrong, but I guess also, at least for me, some German names are unfamiliar. Do people mm. correct you if you say a German name wrong? No, unfortunately, yeah. no. <laughs> Maybe they're also too nice. That's to let me feel embarrassed. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, this is totally the impression I have yeah. too. Like I must say things wrong all the time, but mostly like both ways people are nice yeah. and understanding yeah I, I think it's true that's only um, after you ask them by yourself they, they would like to let you know the real pronunciation they, they will like be more patient and be more willing to let you know the real pronunciation yeah, we yeah. Should ask. <laughs> well sometimes like I'm so worried about making people feel awkward that I don't say anything but sometimes like I've had people correct me, like I've said someone's name and they've just said, oh, it's actually like this. And it does, like, I don't feel awkward at all. Like, I'm just like, oh God, thank you. Now I know how to say it. And so I sometimes wonder, should I just do it? Because maybe they'd rather know. Yeah, definitely. I really appreciate that feeling. For example, there is a, a Portuguese in our lab and once I pronounced his name precisely and and he, like, he, 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 he act that it's amazing, and I also feel very, very, very nice that I can pronounce his name like perfectly. <laughs> so this, <laughs> this uh, encouraged me to like to try to pronounce everyone's name like how how it should be. Yeah. And so, have you ever had any times where, like, say someone's pronounced your name quite incorrectly? And you have tried to correct them, and they have reacted with any kind of hostility. Yeah, some people um, overreacted a little bit because maybe they thought they pronounced it correctly, and I, 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 I told them a totally different one, <laughs> and then they will feel like, oh, it should be like this, and then they feel maybe a little bit um, awkward, something like that. Yeah, it happens. And. When people react like that, does it ever kind of discourage you from correcting people in the future, or do you? No, because usually they are like unfamiliar people, and we will ne never meet again. So I, I usually just forget it. Okay. It happens sometimes. Yeah. yeah. So I know some some of my friends who have moved from China. Some mm -hmm. of them choose to change their name. Yeah, yeah. Also, one of my friends. Okay, is this something you ever considered? Um, no, because I I have my English name, but I really use them because I I, I love my Chinese name better. Um, okay. So yeah, so once people find my English name, um, they w uh, this will let me feel a little bit shy because I never let people know my <laughs> English name, and I I will never let people use it in 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 the normal life. <laughs> Didn't okay. Yeah. So, is there any kind of story or experience that you have about like coming to a new place, like for example, if that's Germany or another country, and like if there's some kind of experience that you want to share related to the topic? Mm -hmm. I think I have. Um... Um, the one thing I concern a lot is because my name is too unreal for, for English speaking people. And I, I'm worried that people will forget it very fast. Yeah, because you don't know how to pronounce it and maybe you will misspell it, which happens very frequently. And mm -hmm. this is what I worry the most. And I wish I could have an easier like Chinese name that everyone can remember because like people like me, my name is very complicated to speak. To, to, to spare and not to pronounce, and maybe people just don't remember my name or remember me that much. So this is what I, 
um, I a little, I'm a little bit concerned. I, I wish I could have an easier name, <laughs> but I, I still love my name. Yeah. Both Vasanth and Shangnan described how difficult it is for people to say their names and the appreciation they feel when people get it close. I wondered how hard it is for people to get close and how our language background may inform the way we pronounce names and even maybe the way we feel about having our name mispronounced. Our next guest is a PhD student in Munich who also did a double major with linguistics and he'll shed a little light on this topic. Hi, I'm Jonathan, so Jonathan Mellis. I am a PhD student um, at the Max Planck Institute uh, for Neurobiology in Munich. And what do you study in Munich? Well, neurobiology, so we look at uh, motion vision in uh, the Drosophila melanogaster. You have lived in France? Yeah, I, I was born in France. I grew up in France and uh, when, I, when I turned eight, 17, 18, 18. I moved to uh, California for 10 years. And How long have you been living in Germany? I have been in Germany since August 2017. Living in the States and living in Germany is like moving there. Did you feel comfortable, welcomed, included? And why or why not? So I moved to the U.S. because I have a dual citizenship which helped me a lot uh, having that feeling that I was belonging to the country, although it is clear that I am not uh, American grown, or uh, born in the US and raised there. Yeah. Um, although the, yeah, it, it depended up the, on the people. Uh, some people gave me a very annoying nickname. They used to call me Frenchy, which was, oh. which was very annoying in a way. Um, and uh, no, it depended really on the people. And it's the same thing in Germany. In Germany, we, well, France and Germany are just next to each other. So it is, I am still European. And I have, I have tried very hard to integrate myself in both countries, I yeah. think. Or as much as I could, right? I don't like soccer that I cannot, and I cannot change it, right? I've tried to like it in Germany. I didn't like it in France, and I still don't like it in Germany, which is a faux pas here. <laughs> more, <laughs> you know, uh, right? <laughs> more so than in France, I didn't know. No, yeah, yeah. Or, but yeah, I, I have felt very integrated, uh, not integrated, but very welcomed. And so I, I was very lucky. And it depended also on the people, right? But I, I've been lucky that I think uh, I'm coming from a culture that is perceived as, or has, a, how could I say that, a better connotation sometimes, or <laughs> good connotations, right? The, the French accent sometimes sounds good, I've been told, in English or in German. There's, which... a, there's a joke from Jerry Seinfeld about, about the French culture and that, like, because sometimes the French are perceived as a bit snobbish. And Jerry Seinfeld said, well, they've got the best food, the best wine, and the best women. I'd be I'd be proud too, is more or less the yeah. joke he makes. There's a bit of a French envy that the world has. Which in a way is crazy, right? Because it's not, absolutely not true. All those points are absolutely not true, right? <laughs> yeah. Those are just, um, how do you call I have forgotten the word. It's, um, a stereotype, I think. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. There are stereotypes, and stereotypes can be uh, positive or negative, but there are always stereotypes, and they don't reflect reality, right? In the US, for instance, the stereotype is that, Asia, is that Asians are good at math. Mm -hmm. That is racist, or I would see that as racist, right? Yeah. Some people might say, well, yeah, it is positive, but it is, in a way, a stereotype, right? The judgment of the person just based on their culture, which is dangerous. And in a way, for me, the, the fact that I was French yeah, has helped me in some cases, but just because of those stereotypes, which is, yeah. But, and that's why maybe I've been seeking for this integration, right? 
that's yeah i'm not a french person just just a french person right i, I am a person so in germany i guess your name would be jonathan yes jonathan i, I think it's totally it's a common name somewhat common in germany right it's not foreign okay. at all uh, it's Judeo Christian. It's But when I guess I'm curious, like when you get if if they assume, because you say it's also kind of a Judeo Christian common name in Germany, if you get Jonathan, do you correct people or No, well that's personal feelings. I, I tend to enjoy it, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, may it might be this idea that well if they call me Jonathan, it's more of an integrated, I am integrated and they don't make any special efforts to talk yeah. to me. They're just what comes naturally and it's more, um, uh, how can I say that? Yeah, to, to sign maybe that they're not seeing me as so different in a way. So, so for instance, I do like to, when people ask me how to pronounce my name and I realize that what I do is that I just say, uh, I don't really care. Well, or the idea is what is easier for you. In okay. a way, I will not put so much emphasis in how you say it because I know that you cannot say it properly, right? The name Jonathan in English is Judeo-Christian, right? And France, Germany, and the U.S. to some extent are very Judeo-Christian in the yeah. cultural background. And uh, well, yeah, the, the pronunciations are, are different. So producing those sounds that are peculiar in each uh, languages is difficult and you learn them very early on or, or not and uh, for, so for instance in uh, the, the french version of the, the name jonathan you have the en at the end uh, the, the vowel which is a nasal vowel yeah um which is difficult for english speakers for german speakers it doesn't exist i mean that makes a slightly different sound which yeah people cannot easily reproduce so it's like saying um, to somebody who never did danced ballet or learned ballet, oh, do a pirouette, you need to learn it. I mean, I guess they could spin around, but that doesn't make it a pirouette. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But it's fascinating because it's, it's just like a different perspective, like to, to think about the specific sounds that people can or cannot make. But to me, also, there's a totally different in like emphasis in the syllables, like you really pronounce strongly Jean Atton. Whereas in English, I would say Jonathan. Uh, yeah, yeah, and also you have, for instance, for the, the in French it's je, but when the je sound starts in English, you make a j. Je. je, so you yeah. put Jonathan, right? The you start with a the, so it's yeah, it's almost impossible. Or and I don't think anybody has ever expected their name to be pronounced right when they're in another country, right? Or the, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's just that there's never like been an expectation to, because as, as you say, like when I, if I say Jean Atton, it, it will mm -hmm. not sound the same because I don't think I'm using my nose to say it as, as you do, but at least like the emphasis is on the right syllable. And so I'm just wondering about like kind of the subtle differences there in like what we can do to pronounce a name and like kind of what the status quo is. Yeah, and I started to think about that after uh, your, your idea or after you introduced the idea. Uh, and it, it, it's a bit tricky, right? Because at some point, if you're trying so hard to pronounce the name the way, so for instance, the French way or the English way, mm -hmm. then you're pointing out that the person is an outsider. Yeah. That you're trying to be sensitive, but you're pointing out the differences that are there. But I will not put that stress and that what is more comfortable for you to talk to me or to refer to me is what uh, I like the most. Okay. Which is probably causing some trouble for people who are trying to make me feel comfortable by calling me by the name I was given, right? I, I must say that I have wondered myself, like, uh, Jonathan in, in German is Jonathan, and some people try so hard to pronounce my name and they do it completely wrong. And I, well, sometimes I'm wondering, why are you not just saying Jonathan? In a way, the status quo would be just to ask people how they like to be called. Yeah, I, that, is, that is the <laughs> easiest status quo. I mean, if you tell me, if you tell me it doesn't matter, I, I guess I should take that at face value from you and just say like, okay, then I, it's easy for me. I call him 
Jonathan, which is not quite correct, but I guess correct well, enough. It is it is correct, right? Oh, in a way, but yeah, yeah I, I, to me, for instance, it would be correct in that it would also mean that I am in a way integrated. I'm not seen as much as an outsider, mm -hmm. right? I'm not like, oh, we need to do something special for this person. But at the same time, intercultural exchanges are also recognizing that we are coming from different cultures and just being curious about them, right? At some point, how, yeah, and there, there's the intention behind the thing, right? Okay. And that, right? Or the, the intention, if it's simple curiosity or if people are trying and cannot, do, I have the feeling you cannot reproach people to not be able to you know, do a pivot uh, or to hear the sounds, then if you have the conviction that you're not being, how should I say, othered already, right? So that the intention behind the, the naming of a person might also influence a lot the perception. Yeah, this is true. And I, and I suppose, like you said, about maybe perhaps more normalizing, asking people, how, is that the correct way to pronounce your name is like, really just acknowledging that the power is back in their hand for how it's done. And if they say it doesn't matter, then it doesn't matter. And if they say it does, then you have the opportunity to change it. After talking with Vasanth, Shengnan, and Jonathan, one thing that became apparent was the importance of simply making a quick check with someone. Am I pronouncing your name correctly? This gives the power back to that person regarding their name and how it connects to their identity. But at the same time, trying to strike a balance between making this effort to pronounce their name and not making such a fuss that they feel like even more of an outsider. For me, that means trusting someone when they say how I'm pronouncing their name is fine, even if to me it feels incorrect and maybe like I could do better. These discussions have also made me realize that I'm also making some mistakes in my interactions with other people. Like, rather than struggling to try and sound out an unfamiliar name in the future, I should just ask someone to please introduce themselves. I think this would save a lot of pain for both of us. It seems small, but I hope by pronouncing our colleagues' names correctly, we take a small step towards a more inclusive work environment so people feel more confident to speak honestly and that their ideas are valued and respected. To guard a title that was rich before, to gild refined gold, to paint the lily, to throw perfume on the violet, to smooth the ice or add another hue onto the rainbow, or with taper light to see the beauteous eye of heaven to garnish is wasteful and ridiculous excess. That's our show. Thanks for joining us and to our guests, Vasan, Shengnan, and Jonathan. And a big thank you to another fellow PhD student, Isabel Louval-Burk, for her portrayal of Shakespeare's Juliet. And to our host, Adrian Lahola Chomiak, for his rendition of the Earl of Salisbury from Shakespeare's The Life and Death of King John. That's all from us. Until next time, bye bye. Offspring Magazine, the podcast, is brought to you by the Max Planck PhD Net and the Science Communication Working Group, known as the Offspring Magazine. This episode was produced by Allison Lewis. It was edited by Allison Lewis and Adrian Lahola Chomiak. The intro-outro music is composed by Srinath Ramkumar, and the pre-intro jingle is composed by Gustavo Carrizo. The podcast series is hosted by Adrian Lahola Chomiak, Alison Lewis, Beatrice Landsbergen, Nikolai Herman, and Srinath Ramkumar, with social media support from Nadia Pirogova. For any feedback, comments, or suggestions, please feel free to write us at offspring.podcast at phdnet.mpg.de. Until next week, stay safe, stay healthy. Bye-bye.